are we to say because of that females as females are choosier? Or is it females knowing, learning this biological fact, come to this conclusion that? Those are two different arguments. One is that I innately as male go mate with as many women as you can. The other is in your culture as you grow up, you're reinforced for that. Those are two different explanations. They're not opposed to each other necessarily, but we'd have to figure out which one's going to be the best one in this context. Are we being culture? I don't know yet. I haven't seen how the slides turn out. I think it's how, are we, how would we test? How would we test it to see if it's culture or not? See if there's anything in human nature that goes against that. Well, I mean, because that would disprove it. Well, we. We would obviously try to see if there's anything that counters uh, Bateman, right, in humans. And we already have one thing that seems to counter Bateman, right? That females are generally thought to be the more attractive, I mean, at least in our simple sample. Here we'd have to do a better sample. But certainly if we found that cross-culturally and historically that females are thought to be the more attractive of the sex, that would certainly make us go, ah, what's going on here? Uh, it's not proof, but it certainly makes us go, there's something weird going on here from Bateman. So what I want to do is I'm going to go, is all this the case in humans? Well, let me set up the argument. I'm going to set up the Bateman argument. Um, well, let's get some facts about females. Well, if they get pregnant, they lose the opportunity for other, perhaps better, genetic matings. Now, what does that mean? They lose the opportunity for other, perhaps better, genetic matings. That's like, I'm not recommending the males do this. I'm not saying they should. I'm just trying to go, what can happen? So if a male and a female get together, and she, I always hate saying get pregnant. That always makes it sound like, eh, something happened. Uh, conceives. Oh, that's the word I want to use, conceives. Uh, so if the female conceives, she could have sex with another male but can she have a genetic mating? No. Usually not. I mean, if she releases two eggs and so forth, yeah, perhaps. But she can mate with as many men as she wants, but assuming no abortion or assuming no miscarriage, she's stuck with dude number one, right? What about the guy? What could he theoretically do? Yeah, after a nap and a sandwich, what could he do? <laughs> Yeah, he can go, and so, so that one time is less, so, hmm, well, the human female knows that, though, right? She consciously knows this, so we can figure out ways we can start testing this. Are there any situations where uh, conception is more or less likely? Uh, no, I mean like uh, think 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 broader. So, uh, are there certain ages where conception is less likely? Yeah. Yeah. So, what might you predict would happen postmenopausally to females and their willingness to engage in sex? It should increase. Uh, anecdotally, I will tell you, like every male that I know that's like 50 something, they're like, oh my gosh, women, when they're postmenopausal, woo! I mean, if y'all would like to look that up to see if that's actually been researched, I would just tell you, every 50 year old male I know that's still dating or dating, they're like, oh my gosh, when women hit menopause, they're like, no babies, woo, let's go for it. It has been researched, and there's an increase in like sexual sexual transmitted diseases after that yeah, as well. Yeah, also the increase in STDs because they're like STDs are for kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, what other data might suggest that uh, that females are 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 engaging this as a cognitive process, not as a straight biological one? Is there anything that's happened in the past eh, 60 years in our culture? Birth control. Birth control. Well, after the invention of the pill, if you looked, sorry, that's not going to show up in any way. Uh, if you looked at the likelihood of males versus females engaging in sex, 
So males were always fairly up here. What happened is, is that female likelihood increased. Males didn't really change that much. Females did. Suggesting that, hmm, maybe this is a little more cultural that females know this. Uh, I'll give you some more data. Uh, because of the extra energy needs and weight, females are more vulnerable. Birth itself is dangerous. Uh, many women die in childbirth historically. This was very, very dangerous. Uh, finally, in ancestral environments, the mother tended to breastfeed for three to four years. So here's the net effect. For every mating that a female engaged in, she might think, oh, is this person worth a four-year commitment? What might the guy think? Is this worth... 20 minutes, 20 minutes, all right. <laughs> is, this, is this worth a, you know, whatever number you pick, huh. Well, females have the larger initial parental investment, but they, but they know this. So you guys start going, well, is, is this going to be biology? Is it going to be culture? We need to figure this out. Um, females also tend to do the bulk of child rearing. This is true across species, and it's, it's true in humans. Uh, that's what I was saying, like, we got to cross a river. So here's a little female, uh, female baboon carrying her young, young, young kid on her back. Uh, females tend to do the bulk of care. Well, who does the bulk of care in humans? We were guessing. Which sex does the bulk of post-utero child care? Yeah, it's not even close. Uh, females perform much more of the child care. So what we're looking at here is the ratio. So one would be equal amounts with uh, both male or female. So any number up here is the female is spending more time. In nearly every culture, the female does the bulk of child rearing. But you know this. So it's like, well, huh. What would be a good test? to see whether or not this factor plays a huge role in mating. Are there countries that provide child care? Right? And if there are, like let's think of Norwegian countries, what would you predict about their sexual ethic? Anyone know? No, if, if the, if the, no if, if, the, if the country itself provides the child care, and so these numbers come in to those countries where it's much more akin to one to one, what decisions might the females make? Okay. Well, they know that there's lots of, uh, there's going to be less parental investment, so therefore they don't have to think about that investment. And so it's going to be less selective. They're, they might be less selective. So you'd predict statistically that females in Scandinavian countries might have more partners, have sex earlier, and guess what? Anyone want to take a guess how that turns out? They do. Um, but let's just look at this in terms of Bateman first off. Let's just see whether or not there's any research suggesting that humans do follow Bateman's principle. And I will tell you, now this is tough, this is tough because we've got to keep back, bouncing back and forth between culture and uh, biology. In nearly every culture where this has been studied, females are still a little bit choosier. Right? Because even if you have birth control, what might you think? You can fail. Right? And even in our culture where you're like, okay, if, 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 you know, if, I, if I conceive with this man, he will have to pay child support, right? That's, you know, you know that. But you know it as certain as you know that you will have to care for the child. Right? If you conceive, you might believe deeply and strongly that he's <coughs> going to pay child support. But what do you know you're going to have to do? Yeah, you're gonna, so, might that variable matter? Yeah. But I'll tell you, what, in, every, in every one we've studied, we seem to find that males still follow, males and females still seem to follow Bateman's principle. Now, whether this is cultural or not is going to be a later discussion, but it still seems to play out. Males express a 
greater interest in short-term mating. Males say they desire a greater number of sexual partners. Males say they're more willing to engage in sex sooner. But why might this be the case? Is it necessarily biology? Like, maybe some data on this. So, like you, so this study, they asked males and females their relative interest in short-term mating. Now, obviously, females didn't say they were not interested at all, and males were not up here. But might there be social reasons that females might say less likely than males? Yes, it's a stereotype. Well, it's a stereotype, but if you say, if you just to go, oh, I love short-term mating, it's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Because, I mean, here's one of the things that's going on in human sexuality right now. There's people doing a lot of hand-wringing over uh, hookup culture. Like, why are females doing this? This is various things. And one argument that's being offered is that females are making a deliberate choice. They're saying that having a steady boyfriend is too much effort involved, so they would rather pursue a series of short-term relationships that don't interfere with their professional development. So they're taking, the, the argument is they're, they're giving a very cognitive-based argument of it's just less hassle to hook up than it is to deal with some guy's crap all the time. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Oh, awesome. What do y'all think of that argument? Yeah, I mean, it's probably true. It's true for both sexes, too, in case you're curious. But me... Uh, Give you another. So they asked males and females, how many sexual partners would you like over your lifetime? Well, what is it? it's a subtle sex difference. <laughs> here. But before we say this is obviously support for Bateman, are males and females reinforced differently in this regard? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, yes, absolutely? I mean, males are expected to have more sexual partners than females, and females are let down upon if they have multiple sexual partners. So it, then, then there could be a cultural reason why this might be the case. There may be biology involved, but it's when we start seeing that it shifted over time, this suggests that it's not as tightly woven to the biology, which gives rise to my question. If I'm trying to understand female sexual behavior, is it best to think of you as a female primate or you as a human? You mean the behavior or the... I feel like behavior is separate from what actually goes on in the female's brain. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, well, I only have access, I mean, I only have access to the behavior. <laughs> I mean, social. <laughs> social. But okay, remember, what I'm trying. Like, I'm trying to. I'm trying to go. Okay, which one is my, the better way of predicting? So we're going to see social, or I could. Should I think of you as you're a female? You're just following Bateman, or should I think you as female are observing certain facts in your culture, and considering all of those facts, you come to a Bateman-like choice that has shifted a lot over time. Yeah, the second one makes more sense. But isn't the reinforcement based on biology? On, on which side of this biology? Is it based on that there's a, uh, a limited amount of resources and if females devote resources to their ovaries, it's not going to go to the brain? Like what biology is it based on? It's very easy to make a biology-based argument that fits with our time period and our, our beliefs. Remember, but I'm wondering, in a hundred years, are people just going to go, oh, he was a victim of his time? So I'm going, what data can we adduce to start getting at this question? And if it were straight by, because let's just look at the birth, let's just look at the birth control stuff. If it were simply biology was the only variable that mattered, and we're looking at willingness to engage in sexual intercourse, the female line should it look like this after the pill was invented? <coughs> so here you have pill, right? Here, pill day. No. What should the female line actually, if it's just, just biology? It should be steady. Yeah, it should be steady. So this suggests that, now this, this difference right here suggests maybe biology. This difference right here, none of these prove, suggests culture. Culture may be involved in here as well, but certainly suggests that this is not simply 
fixed. So when we're trying to work out all these things, we have to go, what role does biology play? What role does culture play? What role does time period play? What role does religion play? All of these variables play. I'll give you all one more. Uh, this is likelihood of agreeing to sexual intercourse. So they asked males and females, how likely would you be to agree to sexual intercourse? And uh, at least by self-report, took women, what, 12 times as long to get to the place where men were after one week. But it still could be culture. And so we gotta, we gotta start, as we get into this last section here, we have to start going, what's culture, what's biology? And I will see y'all Wednesday. <coughs>